כדי This week's teaching is about perception. And automatically, perception is a word that evokes in you an experience of what you believe to be perception. I can't teach you anything unless you let go of what you already believe. And even as I say this, your mind would compute, oh, I am believing something perception, I'm going to forget what is perception for myself. But even then, what you know to be the process of forgetting or letting go of a system of belief is also according to your perception. So that's a trivial matter, is it? I'll invoke a metaphor that I've uh, experienced a while ago. Some time ago, I was... Uh, in a car with someone and I said next week's teaching is on Retsu perception what's what I think about and this person to tease just started sank in and start to sink in the the chair of the car while I'm driving and says I can't help you you see even in the car I don't even see where I'm going and I said well that's a wonderful start to start giving a teaching on Retsu the fact that we don't really know where we are heading. Let's say you're going to New York. You're going to New York because you have something in mind. You have either a plan, an intention, or an expectation, but something that will eventually lead you to New York. But the only thing you see is about two through 500 feet of, of road right in front of you. Okay? You don't really see New York. You don't see your objective. You don't see anything in that. Okay? But you know that you're going towards something. And humans like to be reassured because they need an objective. Now I'm asking you, how would you live with no objectives? Or, to be vigilant and wise, how could you live with small objective and not big humongous ones? If we want to speak about perception, we also need to understand the concept of intention. Because what you perceive is tainted by the idea that you have set for yourself. So if you're in a car in direction to New York, because your intention is to go to New York, you're not going to New York, you're going just in front of you. The proof of that is the guy sitting in the next car behind, in front, on, beside you is exactly on the same road and he appears to be going exactly the same direction but he's going somewhere in the Illinois okay you understand so that dem demonstrates at any one moment you think that you are going somewhere according to the high plan according to the front the the, the very far future or the long-term perception but in truth you're just making the next step you're always just making the next step and the only thing that is really, really important for your survival is the next step. Because if you're on the highway and you are completely fixed on going to New York, you're just going to go off-road and go in direct line to New York and not think about what is required to go there. So I'm trying to make a parallel, I'm trying to make a parallel in life to speak of how your perception actually affects your entire life because a perception before it is mastered is a dream a perception is a dream of where are you heading what are you doing if to organize your immediate life you need to have a long-term plan well have one but if it is not required do you need to invent one Okay. In the sense, can you live or do you think you could live with a shorter term plan 
and live moment by moment and just take whatever's in front of you. Okay? Could you live with this? Think about it. S -s -s feel it. Go inside and feel it. Breathe. Try to look at this concept in a in a objective fashion. I'm not telling you to let go of your plans. I'm not doing that. That would be stupid, okay? I'm telling you are your plans built on insecurity or responsibility? Are your plans built on, on I'm afraid of what's going to happen? Or I'm conscious that I want to avoid suffering, let's do something intelligent. But if it doesn't happen, well, whatever, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's not dramatic. So it's a question of how much your mind, your intentions, expectations, planifications, the wise one, the insecure one, how are those affecting your life? And for some of you, I know that a few of you are retired now and your plan is to, is to just keep on breathing as long as you can. And, and when you can't breathe anymore, um, stay conscious as most as you can while death takes your body. So to evolve from that, instead of thinking in the now, you guys can go and think in the past. Or actually everyone could look at their past and try to, to see, is everything now exactly according to what they had planned? And probably no. And when it's not going according to plan, must it really cause suffering? Can you just be happy with whatever you have now and try to make your best out of it? Okay. I wanted to give a teaching on perception and perception is something that cannot be explained how to perceive truly um, considering that most of what we perceive is not even there and some of you as you evolve you, you notice that that more you go the more how you thought reality was, how you, you were thinking your world is falling apart because the more you go, the more you realize everything is changeable, everything is modulation, everything is always anew, which is, which is you know, the outcome of last week's teaching about Agnaya and Maya. And this time, the teaching is about Yutai Shandoga Jivatai, which is there's light, there's vibration that includes sound, and there's life also as some kind of frequency and all of this flows. Okay, Now if you want to make a beautiful uh, Sanskrit mantra for the Kujin, Om Yota Shandoga Jivatai Swaha. The idea of letting go of your misperception and letting go of your insecurities and your need to control the outcome of what's going to happen in the future to simply be able to take what is alive now, okay, that's the jiva, tai, and to take what is clear now, that's the yota, okay, what is obviously clear, and to celebrate, to simply enjoy the chanting, chandoga, hmm? Chandoga is a Sanskrit word which is whatever comes out of a chant. Okay? It's a it's not often used word. Om Yota Hishandoga Jivatai Swaha is an attempt at explaining to you that even the most precise words can make no sense when they start to apply to spirituality if you try to grasp it with your intellectual mind. So you'll have to go beyond that. You'll have to go beyond that and contemplate what is the innermost sense of feeling frequency. If with this week's teaching you try to go into the feeling that your world was falling apart because it's ever changing and moving and, and you probably had a, an issue at one point, not all of you, but some of you had an issue at one point that you're afraid you were losing control because everything is just so fluid and intangible even if you think it's what you have it's it's so simply modulating and that that sheds um, fear in the heart that's difficult to 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 handle eh?
Yeah, just think about it. Did you, did some of you have this issue? Yeah, okay. Did you freak out? Did you get angry? Did you cry? Did you have emotional outbursts? At some point when you, you tried to keep a handle on life and you just felt it was going through your fingers? Yeah? Usually such a, such a destruction of perception is required, such a, a, a transformation of the experience is required. We feel that whatever we hold on to is just going away. And the more spiritual we are, the more, the more subtle the experience of being alive is. And the more, the more confronting it is to try to live as a soul in a human. Like living as a human in a human body, in a human mind, in a human heart, in a human society. Living as a human in a human world, it's obvious. Living as a soul in a fixed materialist human world, that's not obvious. Okay, That's something that, that is challenging, but it's possible if you, if you keep behaving in what is required for you to keep existing in the material physical world, which is the job, the food, the children, the house, the bills, the, whatever your situation, and keep perceiving everything still as a spiritual experience and even beyond that living it like the soul lives it and that's not obvious that's not obvious I understand the challenges of teaching the last three steps of this nine week process to tell you exactly how I experience it would require me to tell you stuff that you would first you would not understand uh, not all of you but most of you would not understand and you would you would become very afraid because everything you thought you knew everything that is required for you to become stable and happy would you just flow off okay so that's why and I'm explaining this to you just so that, I mean some of you have reactions I feel it right now who the fuck do you think I am that I could be influenced by 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 your words by your thing well if I start to talk to you about how I feel about reality, what, what brings you a sense of security, you might become insecure, you might, you might even start to doubt my teachings because everything is a question of perception and, uh, and of course you know how I am, I'm going to do just that I'm going to try to teach you something beyond your ability right now to conceive it for most of you because two of you are just so way out there and you don't really give a shit anyway Imagine the world around you. Imagine if no one had denial, if no one had masks, if no one had any kind of protection, and they would go by you, and the moment they would go by you, you'd become conscious of their experience towards you. And you would be affected. Now imagine this, do this fantasy in your mind. Imagine people going around you and you feel every desire they have towards you that they never express because on this planet we don't express desires. It's, it's a very wise way not to get thrown out of your job or not to cause wars. But imagine every time someone has a desire towards you would feel it and you would become conscious of it. And if you were able to be conscious of everyone who hates you. Now if you become conscious of every desire that everyone experiences towards you, and by desire I mean wanting to be friends, wanting to be lovers, wanting to, uh, to just to get to know at, at every level, you know, it's very different. Sometimes just sexuality, sometimes just to be friends, sometimes it's curiosity, you want to know. It could cause war, it could cause conflict. It would co cause conflict in yourself because you could not handle the amount of information. Think about it. Would you be able to handle the amount of information and still keep your senses straight? How would you feel knowing everyone that reacts towards you, everyone that does not agree with you, everyone that judges you, that finds you, find you ugly instead of beautiful, that find you to be unhappy, that find you to be arrogant and aggressive when you just... you were trying just to play and enjoy yourself and, and then you don't know if people have some reactions towards you, you ignore. Would you be able to handle that? Now that is the reason 
the reason and, and, and if you breathe I know, yes, I know, some of you are arrogant enough to say, oh, I couldn't handle anything, I could, I could deal with that. You could deal with that if each of these desires or reactions were brought one by one and you would have time to integrate them. You, you might, if you're agile enough for integration, be able to go through one after the other. But go in your job and start to be conscious. It would be overwhelming. And on the long run, there are people who have desires for you that you could not even look at anymore because you can't endure that. And some people that have reaction towards you that you could not endure that because as a human, you would react too much. You know, you, you would protect yourself. So why is your perception so clogged and blocked and why is life so unclear it is to protect you. I hope you understand what I'm saying now. It is to make sure that you will have enough time to deal with one issue after the other, that your perception is clogged. If you want to have a pure, clear perception of reality, you have first to get agile very acquainted with the art of becoming conscious, very fixed in compassion, fixed in compassion to the point that nothing could throw you off of that path, if only for a minute. Because there are people that hate you, that you have never met before, that you simply cross in a shopping mall, and they have this experience of hatred for you. And you don't even know why, because you dress in a certain way, and, and you look, if you're a little um, elegant, you have this person who is poor that's, that is stuck with the hatred of everyone who dresses elegant. Okay, you, you might have this. If you're dressed not so elegant, you go by some rich dude who has this great despise for anyone who is not to his level of culture. For many reasons, you would be constantly conscious and bombarded of every single thought, that every single feeling, and genetic reactions to your pheromones that every single, single person has towards you. Could you handle this? The work of your nervous system is to block off that information. Okay. Instead of becoming fully aware of everything, you have a nervous system that filters out all the information to the minimum and then it's not the true information, it's just the light that comes through to your eyes, the sounds that comes to your ears and the touch and sometimes with what you eat, the taste and the smell and stuff like that. And from there it's not even the true information of what's going on in, in everyone else's mind and experience, it's just stuff you see and stuff you hear that then your sixth sense, the mind, has to interpret and compose an illusion, a dream of that to say that's what this person meant. So, oh I know, we had wonderful ecstatic moments in, in the last week and, and we had moments of great bliss and transcendence and now I'm, I'm, I'm hammering you with this, this terrible down-to-earth, easy to absorb wisdom. I have to move my cursor a bit. Alright, thank you. Screen server, should have turned it off. I know that the feeling is very different for now. But I can't bring you further if you can't acknowledge how the universe was created and how this created universe brought you to be sentient beings and how you were brought as a sentient being with organs tactile and, and sensitive organs that made sure that you had a certain minimum level of denial. Now you've been working on denial very much I, and I hope you can understand the speech I'm giving now about the fact that even nature ensures that you do not become conscious too quickly and that is one of your causes of suffering but has been for a great while and probably still is 
a cause of happiness. You know what we say, what you don't know doesn't hurt? <laughs> well, if you could broaden it, you know, sometimes we say what doesn't hurt, what you don't know doesn't hurt because you think of a specific information. If you don't know a specific feeling of one person and you just keep ignoring it, it doesn't hurt. And if you did something bad or bad is relative according to a perception, let's say you did something that is worth feeling guilty in your culture, okay? You did something against the rule, but you ignore it. You just don't know it, so you don't suffer, okay? So that's a very, very basic of what you don't know doesn't make you suffer, okay? Doesn't, doesn't hurt you. But you need to go further than that. If you were conscious of everything at every moment, you would live in hell, even if you would be in heaven. The amount of information for your nervous system would be way too much, okay? So to speak about perception, I have to, I have to teach you more than how to perceive things as they are. I need to teach you of, of the use of denial, the great, great usefulness of the principles of denial, or else you will become enslaved, because most of you, you've seen the denials in the Tree of Integration, and you've seen uh, how fear, shame, and pride hinders your experience, and, and I just say it to you, well, these denials, actually, they ensure you survive for a while. Eh? They really ensure that you'll be happy. In the beginning of your training, you develop the reactions towards denial. And you develop reactions towards your ego. To find your ego to be something not so cool. And then we had a city two weeks ago about the ego being uh, caused by spirit, by your ego being produced by God, by the, the spiritual nature, by your own consciousness. And this ego created by your own consciousness, imbued with a state of compassion, ensured that you would gain the information drop by drop in a respectful and compassionate way making sure that you would not be aggressed by reality in the retsu in the philosophy of mahabakai it is required to understand what caused denial what caused the refinement of the senses for you not to be conscious of what goes on in, 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 in whatever environment you are? And even the denial that uh, allows you not to be conscious of what's going on inside you. Okay? There was a use for that. You know, we cope with our suffering in various ways. But if you want to be freed from these processes, you need to, to understand why they were built and then understand why you keep them and why you count on them. I can't teach you how to perceive truly and purely the truth exactly as it is while you arrogantly believe that you could face everything and while you are not equipped to deal with the situation. Okay? Becoming conscious of what's going on inside you and inside everyone and, and just to understand every situation purely as they are to understand every event of your life purely as they are is something that most of the time we can't really cope with so quickly. So we need time, we need a delay, and this delay is called um, judgment and discernment. Okay? Judgment as the pejorative judgment of misperceiving something, and discernment as the judgment of really perceiving something really as it is. Okay? So this balance of judgment and discernment the ability to, to, to have an appraisal in your mind of every little situation in your life is, is a balanced yin-yang concept, you know? Because a discernment is your ability to perceive things as they are. And judgment, having good judgment is something good because the word judgment is used in two ways. There's the pejorative judgment of just criticizing with no fundamental real truth-based arguments 
and there's a judgment which is your ability to to think for yourself what is good or not good okay what is good or bad or good or evil and this judgment although um, a tool of the ego is very useful while you really 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 need it until you reach a point where good and evil and all that is just mixed up in the one big experience uh, that you'll eventually just go one step further. Perception of the truth is something that you are afraid of. And I want you to breathe. Somebody answer to Jojo. Or that person who wants to know. I need to take some time, I want you to, to ponder it, because you're, you're, most of you are curious, but you're listening to the words, and I, I'd like you to take a moment to apply it in your mind. Are you honest with yourself? Are you really sure that you want to perceive further? Because I'm going to go and start to teach you that. And to perceive further requires the destruction of your walls. To perceive further requires the destruction of your denials, of what actually for all your life allowed you to cope with reality. To take reality, compose it and decompose it into a dream that you could address, uh, address, <laughs> aggress, yes, we could say that also. There is, there is a dream that we believe to be a very very true because well there is reality like I'm here I'm in front of a camera in front of a camera so you can watch live the stream and and and, and I've just been with students who, who are so happy to have a more refined understanding of the reality but still in this reality we compose an illusion in our mind and we think what is really there okay we think what is really the experience that we're going through and instead of just taking in purely as it is and feeling and being conscious as a soul the information starts by going through our complete um, array of human processes okay um, and your human processes as, are, are filled with filters like judgment of preference uh, if something, you know, I, I told you often, if someone calls you an asshole, why are you insulted? You know, if someone calls you an asshole, just say thank you. Or, or oh, I'm that. Among some other things, I'm an asshole. Okay? Could you handle every point of view that everyone has on you purely as a soul without the mind tapping into reaction? And if, if you want to measure the ability of your mind to simply accept reality as it is, Try fixity. Fixity, you sit, you take a point on the floor, and you stop thinking. And of course, don't do it now. We're doing a little online conference. Eventually, try it. Try to do the fixity. You breathe, you relax, and you look at a point, and you don't think. And you'll see your body react by trying to find a different point to focus on. And then you'll see your emotions react being very aggressive with the lack of stimulation, with the lack of um, entertainment. And your mind, your mental body will just react so much because it can't deal with the reality. It needs to be constantly pushing a new dream in front of you, like a carrot in front of a, a donkey or an Xbox handing on a pole in front of a teenager, you know, just to, to make them move on, you know. And everyone is like that because we have our little donkey carrot pole in front of us. We have our dreams, our desires. And that means that our mind is not re ready to cope with every other aspect of reality. Because you still need motivations to, um, to go through it. By the way, if this person... DJYYO wants to keep listening to the conference, you're pretty welcome to do so. All right. Uh, I'm just too far away from my computer. I'm starting to attack you now. You understand? I'm starting to attack you. I'm starting to throw at you 
that you are inadequate to perceive reality. This is what I've been doing for the last uh, 10 minutes, let's say. Starting to teach you, you're inadequate, you're incompetent, you don't have what it takes to face reality purity as it is. And if you react to this little comment I'm saying right now, well, it's true. <laughs> it means that it's true. If you want to see reality, the soul is required to have the information directly go into the wisdom plane. Bang! What is the wisdom in that? And that, well, you train your soul in doing this. What is the wisdom in this thing? What is the wisdom in that experience? In this comment, in that desire, in that reaction of the other or myself? The ability to go in, in the exact pure experience that the soul is trying to, to go through without any kind of reaction. And for this, mastery of the mind is required. Fixity, integration, exhaustive observation, looking at yourself as you are. Because you're dreaming that you're going to New York and actually you're just going to the next 500 feet that you see. And then you just hope that the next 500 and then the other next 500 feet will lead together like a domino stream falling on itself collapsing reality is one after the other so that you'll eventually get to New York. Well, if you follow the plan of those who wrote these like, white letters on, on, on the green boards everywhere along the road, New York is that way, we promise you, uh, we're sure. Well, usually, <laughs> I mean, the, the road workers who did that, if they don't do, place the good information, you, you would get angry. Okay, So yes, it, it is the fact that you can count on some systems to lead you what you are. So it's true. You would eventually go to New York if you follow exactly the indication. And we can even uh, push this metaphor to the GPS. The GPS composes a dream on your front window of going to New York. You're still in your car, just going 500 feet in front of you at a certain speed, a certain pace. Okay? Reality is what is happening right now. Okay? So, in this fashion, we say. What are you doing now? Oh, I'm going to New York. Well, no, you're not. You're going in front of you. Okay? New York is your dream. It's your hope. It's your expectation. Transpose this in your life. Transpose this in your complete life. Go into the experience that where you want to go in life is a dream and that you're limited by having very fixed dream of course you have to be prudent and wise and plan ahead for your finances to make sure you're, you're gonna eat every day of your life having clothing shelter and stuff like that yes I agree but every other little thing that does not relate directly to your survival how much is it unhindering you how much is it twisting your reality how much is it blocking your ability to appreciate whatever is exactly happening right now. Okay? There is great wisdom to gain by perceiving reality as clear and as pure as a soul can grasp it. First, forgive yourself as humans to have clogged yourself in a system of denial because you needed it to survive. If you want to perceive, although, if you want to perceive reality, you will have no choice than to start to take off the bricks of the wall, to take them out one by one, and to address situations that come in your life purely as it is. And have the courage to go inside and do that integration process. And stop blaming the people around you. And that is the big flaw. Each time something's happened in your life, can you be so honest, at least be so honest with yourself, 
to say that you, br you blame the person around you, mostly the person you love. You'll be looking at someone, it's, it's going to be her fault or his fault for whatever experience you have. First, blame. And if these people are not beating you up and they're not trading in your survival, whatever happens in your mind is not their fault. It's your reaction to your dream of what's going on, your reality which is just an illusion composed in your, your mind. The true reality is if there was only the processes of the soul, you would be so happy regardless of whatever insult or compliment there is. And the fact that you are affected by your job, by your family, by your friends, by your bank manager, by your, the people crossing the street random, the fact that you're affected by all this reality, your ex-wife, your ex-husband think about your parents, the people you left behind who still have an impact on you, some of them you never see again, but they have an impact from the within, from your memory of the experience, they still have an effect on you. Do you really want to perceive reality? Make peace. If you want to perceive reality as it is, make peace with the fact that you will never be reassured about anything ever again. You want to perceive reality purely as it is? Forget any attempt at insecurity, resolving insecurity. You're insecure? Develop faith. It won't resolve the insecurity, it'll just be manageable. Look at all the processes that you have in your mind to try to defeat becoming conscious. Look at everything you do to avoid being conscious, being aware. Some of you could handle the truth but none without great trial and sorrow and joy all mixed up. When the truth is slapped in your face, when you're unprepared, you really have all the pure information. And it takes courage to take away the human reactions to that and just look at the symbolic significance of the mission of the um, of the uh, teaching for you of this lesson okay it's a lesson that happens and it strikes you and you have to be able to manage it you need to be courageous you know so i'm i'm leading you through these processes and getting to know your soul more and more this week will be a week of insecurity of being afraid of what people think about you and for some of you it's already there I need to get closer to read <laughs> of course Buragni this is why we're doing this <laughs> he writes on the chat isn't this why we're doing this yes of course of course I have to remind you because this week's teaching is a challenge this week teaching is you will never be right about anything. The biggest challenge is to accept I'm not right and I am never right about anything and I'm never wrong about anything either. This entire falsification of the mind, the destruction of good sense, wanting to be right, hoping not to be wrong, thinking that others are wrong, thinking that others are right. This right and wrong thing is a boulder, a wanton boulder that wide made of granite and marble just stuck in your eyeballs, you know? Just you can't see through that big boulder of being right or wrong about anything. So, The next step to confronting your perception is who's right, who's wrong. And that will be, that will be difficult because sometimes some people act in a way that cause suffering and you'll say they're wrong. And someone does something that is worth mentioning because it's a beautiful accomplishment and you'll think they're right. 
of course we must avoid suffering and we must encourage happiness. Of course we must do that. But is it necessary to also process it to the concept of who's right, who's wrong? Who did the good thing, who did the bad thing? I can just start to insult you about the, the truth of what I perceive of each of you. And the first reflex is, he's wrong. And then, well, it's maha, let's consider it. And then, it's maha, he's right. And each, each time you, you were off the track, I, I would be about to say, in the words that you can understand, when you thought I was wrong, you were wrong. When you thought I was right, you were wrong. You have to free yourself from this belief of who holds the truth, what is the truth, who's right, who's wrong, who's good, who's bad, who's evil, who's blessed. It is a challenge. Perception is a work of art. Let's do the next step and, and move you into uh, insecurity, okay? Consider that maybe your parents never loved you. If you think if you think that your parents loved you, imagine they they maybe they didn't. How in how much insecurity would that bring? Now, if in your mind you are the type of people that that went through processes, my parents never loved me. If you think that your parents never loved you, try to consider the fact that they probably did. You know, whatever, if they love you or not, just, just go and imagine the opposite. Just for you to have an experience. Would that throw you off? Would that push you away from, from what you believe was true? If you have a lover in life right now, how important is it for this lover to love you or not? Do they really love you? And I know, I just heard like 10 of you just think, oh yes, my lover really loves me, don't trigger this yet. Of course, your lover, your lover, if you know them as loving person, they probably do love you, but just, just for this fantasy, how dramatic is it to be reassured if other people love you or not? How dramatic, to which point is it dramatic to under, to be reassured what is exactly the experience of others toward you. And I will be the first one to talk this week. I am personally challenged. I am personally challenged. I, I really am looking at what allows me what makes me want to count on the stability of the people and as a spiritual master and a teacher I feel loved by a great deal of people and for those who ask me for the terrible Dharma teaching I feel hated by a few of those also <laughs> hated is may maybe strong maybe some people react to me and I'm one of those people who, who has a basic human need to feel reassured that I am loved. And each time I count on that, there's a wall coming in front of me. Well, let's say a, a fine veil, because sometimes I have experience and I, I see through it. But there were, I remember a point when a thick wall, I could not even see the others as they are because of my own need to be reassured so those who who have family keep doing your best for your family's happiness but just once for 20 minutes imagine if they were all dead in some dramatic accident now don't contemplate this so strongly because we don't want to manifest or produce it but have the courage to imagine what if everyone died immediately what how, how would i feel We want to be autonomous people and we still have this issue. We don't need people to love us. We need people to make us believe that we are loved. 
true or false, doesn't matter. We just want to have this feeling that they still feel something towards us. And that's not an obvious teaching because it's something that really attacks, it aggresses the, ref the very fundamentals of our, our feeling of survival. We need to feel a part of a clan, we need to feel loved by a family, and we need to give our best so that they will know that they are loved. And that might be out of an egocentric need to have them confirm that they love us in return. Okay? So this perception that we have of reality is modulated by our own basic dreams of what we really need to feel. Are we loved or are we not? And that is the first filter of distortion. Because there is only one experience in the universe and that is love. The experience that there is love. And out of this egocentric need to understand the process, we go into a reaction of control. I see this all the time. We go and we control the experience of love because we can't find a base where our human is in charge of that experience of love. And sometimes, and you can think about your past relationships, sometimes we destroy our opportunities of friendship, of love, of parenthood, because the human is not the component who is in charge. Life is in charge. Events are just, it just swirls around, it just happens, you know. Breathe. I spoke for almost an hour now, 40 something minutes, and it was a build up to get you to the point of understanding. You want to get to New York, and you will never be satisfied until you get to New York, to a point you can't just be in your car going the next 500 feet. Because in your life, you want to attain a certain objective, which is to be reassured, to be confirmed that you're a good person, to have your ego refurbished and polished with night, butt-licking spit from everyone else who just want to make sure that you will love them back and everything. We are, we're stuck in that, that, this ego expectation that we, we will always be loved and everything will be stable and nothing will change. And, and, and we're, we're not going to have to face change and our perception of reality is, is we're right and the others are wrong. Of course, those who agree with me, they too are right, you know. And all of this builds up a need of the ego to go into a state of control and that control prevents the true authentic of experience of love right now. The simple moment of love right now. What am I feeling? What am I experiencing? And how can it be so beautiful that I'll just fuse back in God? Because of who will think what about me? Of who did what? Of who is going to do what? You know, who says what? Who's going to say what? What is going on in their mind when, when, when I have something going on in my mind? Okay. This entire bullshit of hope of the human brain and the human animal mind that is trying to grasp on to the ride because it's going fast. We're trying to just to hold down to the carriage when the horses are just pulling so intense. <laughs> I hope this speech will trigger your insecurities. I hope this speech will trigger your uncertainty, will help you feel unstable. Because you can't perceive reality while you have something that comes to reassure you. Oh, that is so difficult. 
because there's only one master of the, the, the reality, there's only one master of reality and only one master of the world of illusion, and that's the Christ, that is the Vishnu. Okay? If you are true, purely authentic in your desire to discover the truth, you will have to get out of your black coated box and think my hand is on the handle of that door I'm in this black box in which movies are projected on the walls of my mind and I'm about to just open that door and step out in a world I have no idea what's going on and you snap open the door and all you see is light and everything you have seen before was projected on your walls inside your black box filled with reassuring thoughts feel, filled with with hopes that you will be loved with hopes that you will be reassured hopes that you are going to get to New York if you follow the instructions correctly hopes that people will confirm to you oh yes you're on a good world road what you have done yesterday has not offended anyone we hope it's gonna go fine for you at your next exam at school we hope this we hope that and hope 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 and control control because I'm insecure 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 and just put your hand on that and will open it and make a step and you don't know if a van is not just gonna go and ram at you and you need to just Take a breath and look outside. Get, allow time for your eyes to readjust. You'll have to allow time for your new perception as a soul to readjust to the intensity of the information, of the light that is reality. I'm really also encouraging you to have the courage and the faith to step out of your black box. Step out of your zone of comfort. Step up of your zone of reassurance, of security, and go live the tasteful present moment. Because everything is filled with light, everything is filled with the beautiful chant of the universe, and everything is so alive, and it flows, and it flows as consciousness, and you have no, no idea how to have a grasp on that so subtle nature which is reality only your soul knows that but for your soul to go address reality purely as it is your human has to come out of the black box of reassurance come out of the jail the fortress of control that requires to challenge your attachments although nothing in your life would change you're not going to leave people you love you're not going to change your job you're not going to do anything Hopefully you won't trigger yourself in through intense experiences this week just because I gave a teaching about going out of, of your comfort zone. But how about you start to address life without giving so much credit to your comfort zone, to what makes you comfortable, to make what makes you feel so reassured. And go ahead and go in truth with compassion, with respect for others who didn't choose to evolve like you are, and go and address the issues that life bring you out of your zone of security. And go and look at the places you don't dare look. And accept that you're not right about anything, nor wrong. You're just doing something and some other result happens out of your first action. That's it. Just a flow of events. It's not right or wrong, you know. But I don't know, Maha. I don't know. Is it right or is it wrong? Am I doing it the good way? Well use your good judgment and your discernment and you find out you know if you really need guidance ask for it maybe that that maybe that's the way to do it but how about you start to look at yourself and think that you're gonna challenge everything that brings you security now don't leave your lover because you feel so good with them oh he said to challenge my security I'm gonna throw my life away no that's not wise that's stupid but also look at your reflexes to make sure that everything is fine for everyone always and hope that everything will be fine and everyone will love you and your, 
your systems that require you to stop perceiving the truth and start perceiving an illusion that everything is fine beautiful movies projected inside the walls of your little reassuring black box and the way to go out of that mindset is to say I will sacrifice my own human mind at the feet of the great soul I am so that the light the life the chanting the information the wisdom will come purely as it is and that is very philosophical and there's no way for me to explain it better than that okay and you take the mudra of Ritz okay? and your left index which is the left hand is a human hand the left, the left index of affirmation of knowing this is the truth that is the truth he's an asshole I'm a good guy or I'm an asshole and these are better than me and I'm, I'm so bad and he's so wonderful. You know, these, this pointing out of the left hand, of the silent pointing, the, the, the authentic pointing, the, the, the strong authoritative pointing is the right hand. But this little left hand index will go up to so whatever the system of belief, of reassurance I have, I'll go and elevate them in the right hand, which is the soul. And you wrap it around and you have a little two fingers at the top, those of you know, know the mudra. And this, this need of being reassured, you will sacrifice it as Kundalini, as a human experience that will be thrown in the fire pits of Kundalini and burn, so that your Kundalini, which is your Vishnu, Krishna, Buddha, Divine Power, inside you will rise into your right hand, which is a spiritual hand, so that your soul can take over. Okay? So your human is thrown into the fire of perception of this great light and you breathe and although you wisely planify you know you're going to wish to live the present moment purely as it is and layer by layer you're gonna re release remove these these processes of reassurance and security and just live the moment purely as it is and breathe. Om Yotai Shandaga Jivatai Swaha. Om Yotai Shandaga Jivatai Swaha. Om Yotai Shandaga Jivatai Swaha. I sacrifice everything I am to the great light, the great chant and the great experience of life that flows freely with no hindrance Om Yotai Shandoga Shivatai Swaha Om Yotai Shandoga Shivatai Swaha Om Yotai Shandoga Shivatai Swaha I let go of the processes of reassurance I let go of the amount of energy I put in my mind to convince myself once more for the twelfth time that I did everything good and they are the wrong, the other ones were wrong. I will let go of every system of trying to reassure myself in any way and discover life purely as it is. Om Yota Hishandoga Shivatai Swaha. Om Yota Hishandoga Shivatai Swaha. Om Yota Hishandoga Shivatai Swaha. I accept light of consciousness, the sound of the soul, and the life that from heaven spill my body, and I will allow it to flow from heavens into every plane of my human existence om yotta hi shandoga jivatai swaha and breathe let go of the mudra slowly and softly Concentrate on your perception systems, 
that are at every level of each chakra. There's mostly one at the Jade Gate you want to address first, the Mahabakaya Mantra of the Great Eye, the Eye that perceives from every angle at everything. And this gaze directly from the Holy Spirit, directly from Shiva, the eye of the Lord of the beholding gaze, Avalokiteshwar. Purifies your misperception of life. And you acknowledge that purification process. And you acknowledge the gaze of the Spirit in your human world. Avatar Mantra Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim Maha is the great, immense, biggest, greatest. Baka is the eye that observes, that is conscious, that pays attention, the thing that is directed, that focuses your attention. Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim. Rim is Bija Mantra of purification, of elevation, of blowing in fire so that the fire will have more oxygen and blow stronger. Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim. Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim. Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim. Through this mantra, you affirm at the human level to your soul that you want to be more conscious, that you want to perceive more stuff at more levels. And you say, I'm going to have the courage and the faith to keep processing this information I can, I, until I can just gaze at the truth purely as it is. Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim. Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim. Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim. Breathe. So far, the more you evolve spiritually, the more you discover that your perception was inadequate before and better now. Keep working at it. Keep working at it. It's an ongoing process. Keep working at it. And as long as you're incarnate in the human realm, in the world of samsara, of cause and effect and suffering, there is a way to refine your perception, to go even deeper in a richer appreciation of what the truth is. Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim. Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim. Breathe. Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim. There is only one true Lord of Perception and it is the Divine Nature inside you. It is the Christ, the Vishnu, the Buddha and your case inside you is Shiva. E is the sound of the third eye in the intention. And SH shh, is the sound of the projection of that intention in the world. Tva is the world in a very vast fashion. There is Ishidva. Thank you, Tara, for typing it. Ishidva. Contemplate and meditate. Ishidva. Only Christ Consciousness as a pure, 
gaze of reality. Ishidva, only Christ consciousness, the Vishnu divine state of being, has power over evolution. Only the great divine parcel that you are can modulate the matrix, can affect nature, Ishidva. Only fused back in oneness, in a divine holy state of being, do you have the true perception. Ishidva inspires you that feeling of holiness. Ishidva where the true Guru comes and perceives along with you. And as you perceive, the new reality is composed. The most perfected objective observation is Shidva. Is also what provokes the modulation of the new reality and produces it through contemplation. Ishidva. Ishidva. The observer is divine. Ishidva. The observer is divine. Ishidva. The observer is divine. Ishidva. I am that divine observer. And one step further, I am not the Divine Observer. There is no I am. There is no Observer, Ishidva. There is no one that is doing the observation, Ishidva. Progress in the dissolution of your limited perspective. There is only a phenomena of perception from God to God. Ishidva. There is a perfected experience of love perceived and appreciated at the level of the Divine Self. Ishidva. There is only consciousness in the universe and everything is so simple and wonderful. Ishidva. Personal perception is a dream. Universal perception is the truth that there is love. Ishidva, the ultimate supreme observer. Breathe. Come back to a human understanding level, reactivate your human mind. This week, while you practice your moment of Kujian, to desire to discover the true light, enough to sacrifice 
the security of your black box and go out there in the realm of truth and acknowledge it purely as what it is Om Yotai Shandoga Jivatai Swaha and to desire the refinement of perception of reality purely as it is through the great eye of oneness Om Nama Mahabakaya Rim and meditate on the city of the perception and creation as a dance Ishidva that slowly switches from your limited unique individual perception to the elevated overwhelming gaze of the one God Ishidva that will dissolve your opinions that threefold process will dissolve your points of views it will push you out of the security of knowing something to be true or false and there will be no other alternative than to take the experience of the now purely as it is now and if you cling to your human processes you will feel so alone abandoned and insecure and if you can cling on the soul level existence on the appreciation of the experience as it is there will be explosions of love at random moments you will be so happy to be freed of the enslavement of the need to understand every little aspect of insignificant falsification of your dream you'll let go of of the false nature of your perception and you will be so happy to perceive love in every little opportunity to perceive it the Vishnu, the Christ, the Divine Being can observe even while he holds a lens the lens being your limited human mind it is still God observing through you don't forget it it is still divine nature observing the universe and you can learn to enjoy that experience breathe and relax and I thank you for that moment this week either tomorrow the day after or the weekend at one point when you feel like it there's no strict uh, moment to do it but it's whenever you can you will start another period of two weeks of having cabbage garlic apple cider vinegar and lemon juice a bit every day in the fashion that pleases you most and you can mix those to other things but they must not be cooked okay the volume the quantities and how much and how often every day the morning the evening this is all up to you it has no matter just start to give another boost to your system okay and see what it will bring again other than that eat whatever food you want no problem drink whatever you want okay next week we will address an experience that really really requires for you this week until then to go out of your 
need of security as as what has to do with your perception to be reassured of what you perceive is truth or, or, or right okay do your practice do your integration go out of your doubts and everything all right good